Hey everyone, Tamara Glenn here, Samantha Thomas from Halloween 5. I'm coming to you on The Rock Stock with Chris Concha. All right, welcome into the Rock Stop. Chris Contra here, and I got a good show for you guys tonight. My guest this evening is probably best known for her role in Halloween 5 as Samantha Thomas. I am, of course, talking about the very lovely Tamara Glynn. How's it going, Tamara? Hey, hey, Chris. Uh, wow, I'm, I'm great. How are you? And, oh, firstly, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on um, the Rock Stop. It's an honor to, to chat with you and um, just thank you so much. Definitely. Anytime. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm really happy to have you here. I mean, you got a busy week coming up with, uh, convention this weekend. We'll talk about that a little later on, uh, where some fans can meet and greet you. But before we get into all that, I'm just curious about, uh, growing up in Arkansas, like, did you always have your eyes set on showbiz? You know, my, all of this, you know, my, my move to LA, um, when I was a youngster, it all started actually, I grew up singing in church and, um, yes, yeah, like church, little mm-hmm. Southern Baptist church. And that led to, and I always loved entertaining. I loved live performances. And, um, like I said, I was, I was singing solos in my church and there was, my mom had caught wind that there was going to be a local beauty pageant in my town, my hometown of Arkadelphia, Arkansas, like Philadelphia, but Arkadelphia. <laughs> and so she asked me one day, she said, hey, babe, she said, would you like to be in a beauty pageant? And I'm like, sure, let's do this. <laughs> and since I was already singing, because you also had to have a talent, and um, since I was already a singer, she said, well, would you, are you, if you're going to have to sing, and if I have, like this huge audience, is that okay? And I'm like, Sure, I got this. <laughs> so I that's that's how it all started. I entered the pageant and I won. Oh, wow. And then I went on. I always wanted to um, twirl batons. So I um, I took private baton twirling lessons and I could twirl two and three at a time. And I would twirl fire and all kinds of wow. stuff. So depending upon the competition, I would either sing or world, but I never did both at the same time, thank God. <laughs> I grew up singing a lot of Linda Ronstadt. Uh-huh. Uh, Heat Wave. Heat Wave was my signature competition song for many, many years. <laughs> so, um, and I always did well with that one. So, um, but yeah, and the pageants, I mean, they would take me all over the country. And I was actually down in Miami and I won a huge pageant down there. And then after that, um, I was at a modeling um, convention sort of event out in Vegas. And there was a talent agent there from Los Angeles who approached my mom and he said, I absolutely love your daughter's work. I would love um, for her to you know, read um, for me an audition. And he said, she's just got this gleam, this shine, this goal about her. And my mom said, okay. She said that, because I was very young. I mean, I was like, you know, 12 years old at the time. Yeah. And so um, my mom said, you know, I will be in the room with her. And he's like, oh, yes, absolutely. So I read for him. And um, he said, I think it would be to your daughter's best interest if this is what she wants to do. Um, I think she has a really damn good shot at having a career in TV and film. And I think you should go back to Arkansas, get her in some um, some voice lessons, get her with a dialogue coach yeah. immediately, uh, because I had that real southern twang, you know. I mean, <laughs> I said y'all, and yeah. even one so even one syllable words have like five syllables in them, you know. <laughs> right. And um, so that's what we did. Went back to Arkansas. I hooked up with a local uh, college in my hometown. I got into voice lessons and and um, and speech training immediately to try and shake off, you know, so much of the deep southernness in my body. <laughs> and, and you know, and 
overall preparation to go on to L.A. within like four months. And so that's how it all started. I always had coaching. I was always in lessons, whether it be, you know, uh, dance, you know, tap, jazz, ballet, uh, my vocal lessons, um, twirling. I mean, I was always just, that consumed my childhood. Yeah. So from a very young age, I learned that you have to practice, you have to work really, really, really hard if you want to win. Definitely. That <laughs> you is... know, if, if you want to get anywhere, if you want to win the pretty trophy, whatever, you know, you've got to work because even that many years ago at that age, um, you know, competition is, is always, you know, somewhat fierce. And these were comp- these were not competition where everyone gets a trophy for effort. I mean, yeah. you know, like, it wasn't like that. It's like there are clear overall winners. And I was blessed and I was very focused from, I guess, coming right out of my mom's womb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, that I... That was just instilled in me and who I was as a as a person. Definitely, definitely true. Definitely true. And you know, I was gonna I was gonna bring it up a little later, but since we're kind of talking about uh, you know your time doing pageants and things, you were in that Growing Pains episode where you it was called Homecoming Queen, where you yes. were. <laughs> How was that experience, you know, considering you actually were a pageant girl? Well, I'm not sure a lot of the other ones on uh, on set were. Right, I was the official pageant girl, and. Um... I had a problem going back, I mean, I, not with the show, but kind of with that with that storyline. I mean, it, it was an, an amazing honor to be mm, cast on Growing Pains, don't get me wrong, but the time, the, what the, the storyline was, was mm, Tracy Gold was gaining weight and blowing up, and right. we were all making fun of her. Back, and so now I think it would be more controversial than it was then. That was a little... Um, because, but then again, you know, it was entertainment. Mm-hmm. But me, um, I mean, yeah, I felt a little awkward about that. But then again, you know, it's just it's entertainment, and you're hired to do a job, and you go do it, and you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, professional about it. But but that's how I felt personally. So looking back now, you know, I'm like, my God, <laughs> I mean, that was just wrong. You're still <laughs> blame it on the writers. <laughs> Yeah, at that time, I, I, yeah, and Tracy Gold has even said like uh, how the producers and stuff were asking her to lose weight and things like that. So yeah, I could totally see where you're coming from in that uh, in that regard. Yeah, still a good credit for you. Growing Pains was a great uh, sitcom there, and sure, absolutely. I mean, it's an American classic, now, right? So yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, so yeah, I wanted to you know got to talk about Halloween a little bit. I mean, you're in the uh, the Revenge of Michael Myers, the um the fifth movie of the series sequels seem to get a little more uh, crapped on, I guess, than others. And, and, you know, it's interesting because a lot of times the, everybody will say the, the first movie is the best. And I can understand that as uh, you know, it, it sets the foundation for the whole series. I mean, what is your opinion on, uh, on all of that? So <clears throat> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Um, I love the original myself. I know the, I know how much the fans and the bazillion millions of people out there that the original will always not only be their favorite in the franchise, but be their all time favorite horror movie. Wow. Yeah, I mean it is it is definitely um, as it is as it is as it is mine. And yeah. um because yeah, I mean I was a fan. My mom took me to my mom was the horror buff in the family. And um, she's the one that introduced me to horror at a very young age. And, of course, go back because we're in the Bible Belt and I'm in church singing. But, you know, uh, my mom and I are watching horror movies mm-hmm. together. How fun is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, anyways, you know, I I did see the original. I did not see two and three or four. I had, I was packing, actually getting ready to go to Miami to do a little, um, a little role on the last episode of Miami Vice ever. It was called Free Fall. The, the s- so series I'm, finale. I'm, yeah. 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 The series finale. Wow. Seriously. So I'm, pe- I'm pecking to go down there and my agent calls me and she's like, Hey, Cam, you have an audition tomorrow for um, a feature film. And I'm like, okay. <clears throat> and she said, yeah, it's for um, Halloween five. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like how, like Halloween, like, 
Halloween, like the scary movie. Yeah. That movie Halloween. And she said, yes, honey, that movie, Michael Myers. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> yes. So I run over to the casting office and go pick up my thighs, come back. And here I'm already like beaming, you know, like a laser or whatever that I'm going to Miami soon. And um, so I go into my audition. I audition and um, they said, okay, we're going to send the tape off to, um, to the producers and the director who are already in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'm like, cool, you know? So the next day I fly out to um, Miami and I get a call in Miami. Now granted at the time I'm like, you know, 19, 20 years old. I get a call in Miami that I have booked Halloween five. Yeah. You're in Miami. You're on the set of Miami vice. Yeah, and I've got, you know, Don Johnson's right there and Philip Michael <laughs> and Eddie Almost and, you know, I mean, hell, I am living the life. <laughs> Damn, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not complaining, you know. So she said, okay, so what you're going to do, she said, when you fly out of Miami, you're going to go ahead, you're going to come back to L.A., you're going to immediately pack a couple of bags. And she said, uh, you're going to be on your way to Salt Lake City. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And then totally, I'm like, it's Michael Myers. Okay, enough of my advice and how I'm ready to get on to Salt Lake City. Series finale or not. Yeah, sorry, Don. Sorry, <laughs> sorry my advice. Michael Myers has a little bit more, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah. Considering, you know, you love that. So, you loved horror movies growing up. Right. I mean, that was really, yeah, awesome opportunity. Right, right, right. So, so I arrived and... I had been, they had gotten the script to me in the meantime, but there, there were store visions being made, all these changes. And I had read my death scene prior to my arrival in Salt Lake City. I'm like, eh, this is all right, you know, whatever. So I get there and the word is that Halloween 5 was running on the heel, the coast riding seriously on Halloween 4 because Halloween 4, because Three was completely without Michael. Yeah. Four, they had, four, they had had a decent amount of, you know, success. They were happy with it. Right. And they did five. They turned it around and did five right on the heel of yeah. four. Yeah. It was right. It picked up right where the other one left off. And I'm like, right, right. And it was very fast and everything. I'm like, oh my God. So, um, you know, I know that five has not been as well received. And I know that they were, you know, making, like I said earlier, a good amount of revisions on the script. When I arrived, I did have, and this was, you know, I guess I was so innocent and just so, I mean, the bravery I had to do what I did is I look back now and I think, what in the hell was I thinking? But <laughs> I, I approached, I approached the producers and the directors and I said, you know, Okay, I'm I'm really not liking this death scene. Wow. I said I, I said me dying is cool and all. I said, but you know, I said you see her she's not a game bat, but she's just so pure and innocent and she just goes along and she's talking about how she's gonna have you know, she and Tina are conversing about that and sheep and you know, and she's setting up her the most special you know, is a very special night in yeah. a teenage girl's life, you know? Yeah. And I said, they had her dying, like, instantaneously. Like, this was going to die, Sam was going to die, just <sighs> like that. And I said, okay, let's, let's look at her character development here. <laughs> I said, um, it would be so much more effective if she doesn't die right then, if she, like, grabs, like, the, the, the pitchfork, <clears throat> out of his back and, and she tries to like fight back or let's make her do anything, but she can't just die like that. That's boring. <laughs> you, you had the conviction to really fight for this character. I did. And I did it with Ramsey Thomas, Dominic Osina Gerard, um, and Mr. Akkad. <laughs> wow. Wow. And, and they went for it. Yes. I'm very grateful that they listened to me, but they did with, with, I mean, they were, um, very, encouraging and they were um they were i mean seriously they were genuinely they were so kind and yeah. i i didn't know any better i yeah. guess sometimes I, 
I was just going to say, sometimes yeah. that uh, that not knowing any better and just, you know, throwing throwing caution to the wind, it, it leads to the best results. Yeah, and just being so naive, yeah. like, hey, we're all on we're all on equal playing fields here. We all we all want us to have like a really good movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I I completely yeah. agree. Yeah, I, I don't know if you watched. I mean, I'm sure you maybe checked out some of the movies that came after Part Five. I've just been kind of disappointed with the ones since. Well, I think that's the overall um, consensus. I mean, I do. Yeah, and yeah. then you know, then Rob, then Rob comes in the picture. You know, oh, right, the Rob you know, Zombie movies, right. I, I respect him um, for his efforts, and I he, you know, portrayed his, his cinematic flair representing Michael, um, I think, to the best of his ability. And a lot of fans liked it and dug it. And even today, I mean, I, I hear quite often being out on the convention circuit that those that Rob's are their favorite. But you know what I mean? To each his own. Yeah. Um, because everyone has a completely different perspective. And the way Rob told, you know, his storylines and made Michael, um, you know, because Michael was back in the originals and everything. I mean, the original and, you know, the sequels. I mean, Michael was a normal size person, just size wise. Yeah, right. You know, we're talking and all of a sudden, you know, you've got the amazing Tyler Maine, um, and, and he and Michael is now this this beast. Yeah, yeah, it brought a whole new dynamic to that character for sure. Right, and so exactly, and the elements and the layers and the depiction of, of of that. I mean, it just took on like this whole other other meaning. So, um, but yeah, like I said, you know, as far as as far as they all go, I mean, I just think it's really nice that the fans have, you know. So many to relate. Yeah. So many that they can call their favorites, and this is my second favorite, and this is my third. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's really interesting to get their takes on and why, because sometimes I will read why they like, you know, two better than even the the second one, even better than the original, or they like five better than the original. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, oh my god, what are you smoking? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of it too is a generation thing, very generational because, um, you know, I get guys and well, and girls because girls, well, now women will come up to me and say, Oh my God, my best friend and I, we used to dress up just like Sammy and Tina for Halloween. <laughs> and, and then you've got guys that will come up to you and go, you were my first crush. And I was like 12 and I'm like, okay, that's enough. You don't like to hear that. So, yeah. I mean, because then they try to explain more. Oh, they, oh, it's when they elaborate that it goes a little too far. Uh, yeah, 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 not anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. But <laughs> you were definitely, um, I mean, as you know, you're talking earlier, the pageant uh, queen, you know, of course, you're a true beauty. So were you like uh, always the most popular girl in school? or? You know, I I loved school, but I, I hated, I just, uh, was I popular I don't want to say that I was popular. I went to school to do the work. I sometimes despise school because my mom was Michael Mann's executive assistant and Michael's office was at Universal Studios. So when I wasn't at school, I got to go hang out on the Universal lot <laughs> and um, go to my mom's office and run around the lot with like Alfonso Ribeiro and that's when they were shooting Charles in Charge and you know oh, yeah. different strokes and and we all like hung out together and then other executive kids would be there and so we all had this like you know just pack yeah of like little studio brats that would just run around so and my mom also I mean she worked 90 hours a week so you know when your mom's working 90 hours a week and she's a single mom and working for someone, you know, the magnitude of Michael Mann, I mean, it just, um, my, my childhood was very interesting. Yeah. I, 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 probably a lot of kids can't relate and, unless they were on set with you, like uh, kids from different strokes and things. And all of it, and, and all of it instilled very, um, very professional work ethics and values and morals. And I got to, you know, I got to see it like 15 years old. Um, I mean, when you've got, someone, like I said, Michael, in your life, um, you just sit back and observe, or at least I did, um, 
and you just sit back and observe how he the importance of what he's doing and there's a reason why he's doing it and just the work values of the entertainment industry as a whole. Very important lessons to learn early on, I'd imagine. Yeah, and that's when I learned, you know, at like 14, 15, I'm learning, okay, work is, work is time, time is work, and it's all money, and this is what you have to do, and you have to put all these little pieces of the puzzle together, and this is how he's doing it. So yeah, I mean, he was quite the mentor in my life for okay. quite a few years. That's great, that's great. Um, you mentioned, I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there, you mentioned different strokes. Uh, you were running around with those kids. Was Dana Plato around at that time? Uh, like working on the show or was that after she left that was after i think she left i was just wondering what uh what she was like because you know she seemed like such a sweet girl that uh kind of went down a, right, right, right. a wrong path there but um yeah okay i was just sure. wondering if you had any you know interaction with her no but, i didn't so all right we want to talk about the um the new halloween coming out kudos to malika Cod and the franchise um to carpenter um uh, blumhouse you know all of them for going about this the way that they did because, I mean, you're dealing with a billion-dollar franchise, and the fans have wanted this for so many years. So many years. And they had teased it so many times. Yeah. And, you know, huge, huge, like I said, kudos, respect, everything to them for doing it the right way because instinctively I guess being a part of the franchise and even if you're not a part of the franchise but if you really look at the history of the franchise um, they're not in the salute and it had to be done a certain way yeah and, and they were very they were very smart about this I mean they were and you know it's the the success of the new Halloween also affects the rest of us, they're on the convention circuit and the fan base because <clears throat> if the new Halloween does well, hey, you know what? We're all doing well. And and uh, and there's so many layers to all of this. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, and it's about the fans yeah. for the fans. And when you go out and when you're signing autographs at the, at the conventions and everything, I mean, you'll have the grandparents bring yeah bring their kids and then the grandkids wow and it's like you have these these generations of just ha I mean, halloween lovers yeah and uh, that's coming out i guess around halloween <laughs> conveniently enough i think that that theatrical release date i believe is october the 19th it may be the 18th which is a thursday because i do think the 19th is possibly a friday and most yeah. theatrical releases you know are released on thursday so it's going to be interesting. I mean, as far as the film goes itself, I know absolutely nothing. Um, I yeah. think the mask is amazing. And yeah. um, I'm where what I've seen from the trailers and um, and a few other pieces here and there, I mean, I think the storyline is just really going to kick ass because, you know, this team that they ensemble, they have a way of just, you know, Michael is so cool in the way he executes the kills on screen. <laughs> yeah, he's very creative. Well, he is. And there's just like, I mean, there's just, yeah. So um, I'm super pumped. Yeah. I know it's going to be amazing. And um, like I said, they're, they're in it to win it. And yeah. I love supporting the franchise. Um, it's, it's an honor to be a part of that franchise. Yeah, it's, it's so. I, you know, I raised my, my son and I think I, he knew when he was about, I don't know, I guess when he was around 10, um, I started talking a little bit about Halloween. And then when he was probably, I don't know, 12 or 13, um, I let him watch, um, everything except for the sex scene, you know, again, another good call. And, um, <laughs> Well, you know, I, I believe in when you're introducing, you know, anything to children, whether it's horror movies or anything, um, I, I just felt it was my responsibility as a parent to introduce him to horror and my work as, you know, a horror actress at that time and this, and this incredible, being a part of this incredible 
freaking movie franchise. You know, I mean, in the horror in the horror community, we are all so we just are also in awe of one another, be it the peers, be it us with our fans. Yeah. We're just family. Yeah, it's a great camaraderie amongst amongst that. There uh, is yeah. so many I mean, oh my God, is it amazing or what? It, and I mean yeah. There's so much, there's so many, I mean, the people in the horror genre, when I did my first convention, which was Horror Hound Cincinnati back in March uh, 2013, I did not know what to expect because all these years I've been in Arkansas, nobody here really knows about, you know, nobody there knew about Halloween. And so all of a sudden one day back in 2012, August 2012, I bumped into Justin Beam, who was running the big official Halloween movie Facebook page um, on Facebook. And um, I sent him a message and I said, hey, Justin, it's Cameron Glenn from Halloween 5. And he writes back. And all of this is being messaged through, like I said, this page carrying over a million people at the time. Yeah. And he said, he said, Cameron Glenn? And I'm like, yes, it's me. And he goes, where have you been? Oh, I've been in Arkansas, raising my family, taking I mean, raising my son, taking care of my family. He goes, Cam, um, you have fans that would love to know where you are, what you're doing. I said, I don't have any fans. What are you talking <laughs> about? Because I've been in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. I, been... I was so disconnected, detached to all of that. I had no fucking clue. Yeah. Not one whatsoever. <laughs> And so he said, so the conversation went back and forth for a little bit. And um, he said, hey, Pam, and I said, yes. And he said, do you mind if I announce on the Halloween movies page that I've bumped into you? And he said, you know, I'm sure people want to hear about you and, and see you. And I said, sure, go ahead. And... I did not think, I didn't think anyone would give two shit. The floodgates opened. Mm -hmm. My, the friend request started coming in so fast. In my computer, almost, my Mac almost crashed. I'm not <laughs> kidding. I was sitting there watching all of this go down and tears wow. started pouring down yeah. my face. That is great to be, uh, to be appreciated <laughs> like that. It was the most amazing, oh my God, the most surreal because you just think, oh, my God, all the bad things that were said to me as a child. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> doing it. And yep. you know what? To God be the glory, because you know what? This right here is my story. This is my journey. I am so grateful, and I'm going to be so sweet and kind and so loving. And I always want all of these amazing fans to yeah. know exactly how much they mean to me. Very, very well said, and and you uh, you make yourself very available to the fans, which I know they love. In fact, you got the convention this weekend. I think you're flying out tomorrow, right? I am. I'm going down to Tampa Bay Scream, and a couple of weeks ago, I was in um, Chicago for Flashback Weekend, and yeah. before that, I was at Crypticon in Kansas City, and then back in March, I was in, um, or no, April, um, I was at Detroit uh, Motor City Nightmares, and then I have... Um, Supercon coming up the end of September in Sioux Falls, and then I have um, one in Nashville at Full Moon Tattoo, I think, in Film Festival, something like that. Sorry if I didn't get the name right. <laughs> and then I've got Minnesota Crypticon coming up. So this weekend, if you guys are in the Tampa Bay area and uh, you're around that convention center, go uh, go say hello to Tamara. Yes, come see myself and say hi. And um, Lenny Quigley will be there and um, many others. I mean, this is going to be a great, great show. How is it getting together with all? I mean, you, you know, you guys make the um, those convention circuits. It's great to see everybody, like, you know, the, from different franchises and things. You guys all get along. It is. It is. You know, when I was at Flashback a few week, uh, a few weekends ago, it was awesome because, I mean, I'm with Calissa Rose, who's a friend, Christina Lee McCarthy, you know, Alex Vincent, uh Peter Thomas Barton, Judy Aronson, everybody. And it's just so much fun. I mean, my God, and it's like, you know, it's just the sisterhood, the brother sisterhood, when yeah. we're all, you know, connected and we're all there. And, um, 
Yeah, it's just this amazing vibe. It's, it's so awesome. It really is. But, and to know how excited the fans are to see us all together. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's so special. I happen to see on your Instagram, we were talking about a little earlier, um, you had a picture of a Throwback Thursday with Brett Michaels from Poison. I did. I did. Um, I did a show well, while I was signing um, at a show back in, I think it was 2014, the first part of 2014 sometime. Um, he was performing, and um, I was signing at the event. So got to hang out and, and chat with him. Are you a rock fan, a Poison fan, or just... You know, um, the timing of me being asked to do that show with Brett headlining that um, was quite unique. My mom, my mom had passed away on February 4th, 2013. And long story short, because I know we're almost out of time, but my mom was type 1 diabetic. And she would follow Brett um, health issues, you know, with his diabetes as well. Yeah. And when she passed, it was really one of those do 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 kind of moments because I would get in my car, and every rose has a thorn. Wow. Would be on the radio, yeah. and that was recurring. And then when I got the call to do to sign autographs at that show, um because it was like me signing and then Brett playing and then some fingers and everything was super, super cool. And when I got the call to to sign at that show, I just looked up and I'm like, okay, mom, this is just because I'm telling you Brett was my mother's favorite. I, I do believe in, in angels and spirits and are the ones who have, uh, who have passed, crossed over. Um, I do believe and um, we'll, we'll have to talk some time about some, some, some proof of proof of how they still hang out with us, and, and they um, they do let us know that um, that they're with us. Definitely, Absolutely. yeah. Well, yeah. Anytime uh, you want to come back on the show, I'll be happy to have you on. So uh, this was really great talking with you and uh, going down uh, memory lane on a lot of this uh, great work you did in the past and and uh, the exciting things you got coming up. And um, like I said, everybody, uh, if you're in the Tampa Bay area this this weekend. Um, be on the lookout for Tamara at the convention. Tampa Bay Spring. All right. So uh, thanks thanks a lot, Tamara, for uh, doing this interview. And um, take care. Thank you very much. And thank you um, to all your listeners. And um, I'm really honored that you asked me to be on your show, Chris. Thanks a lot. No problem. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.